hello. Uh, we are Team A in Unit Two. Uh, I'm Jun Chung, and other uh, member is Unzo Che and Ha Jin Ku. Uh, our topic is how to keep social connections uh, during social distancing. Uh, according to a research, uh, forty seventy point five percent of of Korean got depression uh, and anxiety because of this disease. Uh, it, this disease uh, lasts much longer than our expectation. It's, it is called Corona Blue. Uh, in this situation, uh, there are some movement to promote social interaction as the alternative of this problem. Our research question is uh, how to keep social connection and during social distancing through the architectural design and urban design to overcome Korea's Corona Blue. Our site uh, is from the Hapjong Station and Maon Station, Mapugo Office Station, and Hangang Ido Park. Uh, this is uh, our team's our unit site, and our team is specific. Uh, our specific site is here. Uh, there are Mangnidak uh, is is well known for Mangnidak and is Maon Market. Uh, to understand the characteristic of our site, we analyze the site as many as possible. The concept of that this analy analysis centrality, uh, the concept of centrality explains the hierarchy of the nodes or edges, uh, and centrality index is useful to understand the uh, understand the, within the network of the flow tendency in trans transportation geographies. It consists of uh, betweenings and closings and straightenings. We anal analyze uh, as soon as as possible as many as many as possible. Uh, in this graph shows the betweenings value. Uh, so it 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 is from the, the origin is the retail store is the dot or all those dots and to the entertain entertainment. Uh, there are many values, uh, Mangli and Mango Market and Food Alley. It it means that there are there are much uh, pedestrian flows. The between value uh, show show uh, is is the uh, is to measure the centrality. Is the total number of the shortest path at the target location is divided by the total number of shortest path that exists between the two nodes of given radius. So uh, I, I, we think uh, it's very similar to real data because here is the uh, very famous main street from the Mangwon station to the Hangang Park. And here is the Mangwon uh, Market and Mangli uh, There is a high value. It means there are so many uh, floating population. Uh, we to figure out demographics, demographics in this area, we also analyze the, the number of household and residents uh, of the different age group using the open government data. Uh, this, the interesting is that the number of 30 population in 30 is near the Hangang Park and near the Mao Station and near the Mapul Station. Uh, however, uh, population in 50 is, uh, there are so many, uh, they are very evenly distributed. Over the over the area. Uh, to we conduct an on-site survey to identify the correlation between the real uh, our real pedestrian flow and between these value we calculated. The location is Hapjong Station and Mao Station Office, Mao uh, Mapu Office Station. And there are forty six spots. Uh, we decided uh, this path based on the between these top 10% and bottom 10% value. Uh, we, we did it uh, last Sunday uh, at uh, 2, 2 p.m. to uh, from 2.30 p.m. to the 5 p.m. Uh, the, we counted the pedestrian and vehicle in for 15 minutes.
uh, this shows the, this is the video uh, we count how we count the pedestrian and vehicle. Uh, in this uh, in this survey, vehicle means the bicycle and bike and electronic scooter. We did it uh, for 15 minutes at every every 46 bus in last Sunday. Uh, based on the data, uh, we we calculate the we calculate the uh, we did the uh, we validate the data uh, based on the uh, spear experiments uh, road a uh, spear spears correlation and spear mass rank co correlation. Uh, uh, based on this data, uh, there is a correlation between the between this value. Uh, we calculated and the number of pedestrian for an hour uh, we we counted uh, the value, the rule is over than 70 percent and with the p value is less than uh, 0.1 percent so it this means this data is very reliable to use as to use as the data for the statistical tool so we and, and then we uh, use the linear regression model to fit the line and this with this with this calculation we can predict the the number of pedestrians uh, with uh, without the on-site survey this is the result of the our prediction model uh, this we calculate all of, all of the uh, the number of pedestrians based on the between its value uh, this number uh, means the, the number of pedestrians. Uh, this this uh, result is shows the, the number of vehicles uh, flow for an hour. It shows that, uh, uh, but it's very reliable data. But however, uh, we can it is show that there is a quite big, big different in real day, uh what we think because here is the Manglida Kid and Mama market. We we usually expect that there is a very uh, many people in this area, but it, these these blue uh, blue dots show that uh, there is a uh, low population floating population. Also, we compare the uh, real data uh, provided by the Seoul Metropolitan Government, but there is a quite difference based on the. Uh, Local characteristics such as Mount Mangyal Hill and Mount Mount Mar Market. So, to approximate the, this this model, we use these uh, images. There is no real data uh, from this uh, website, so we get uh, this image and we got the RB, RGB value. And there are five kind of index uh, from blue, green, yellow, orange, yet red. Yeah. We using this uh, first for algorithm, we got the, this RG value and then use as the uh, index and weights for approximate approximate the uh, real data. There is a quite uh, some difference, but uh, even even we use this, uh, there is still difference with your data and our model. So we decide to uh, analyze the outlier. Outlier means uh, there is a two kind of rank. We count the uh, real data, and we rank the between its value. There is a big uh, outlier means there is a big difference between the uh, rank count and rank between its. Uh, orange dots means that is there. There are very uh, high pop floating population than uh, between its value, and this very low population than between its value. So it is interesting that uh, uh, based on the, uh, there are many outliers, outliers in the, from the Mao station and, and vehicle, there are so many outlier, uh, vehicle outlier uh, focus on the uh, food value. It means the, their outlier shoes uh, 
some local characteristics. So our uh, our concept is to make the uh, how to how to disperse the people from the over from the overpopulation uh, space. Uh, we uh, we know that there is uh, some outliers. Uh, here here is outliers. Uh, that it means that there is a very low floating population. Then uh, network hierarchy. So we our purpose is to disperse uh, this overpopulation area to the uh, uh, this this low population uh, area by using the design. And with that, uh, we also keep the over distancing and and social interaction, uh, social di distancing and social interaction. Uh, we, to categorize the uh, street, we analyze uh, uh, some streets, 10 kind of streets based on the interaction, uh, intersection and road width and pedestrian passage and a program at first floor of the building and the number of floors and beating is value. And we classify them as the by, by the load width and the number of trees. Uh, and then we we designed the we propose the design propose the redesign based on this uh, Apollo. And this this is the warning warning uh, section. And it, there are only section is only section is there is a we can go one way so we can do uh, we can do the uh, de redesign the facade uh, to to install the bench or we redesign the road to to uh, for the social social interaction and social social distancing. Uh, this circle is a, a two meter diameter diameter, two meter diameter, so uh, people can keep the social distancing with it in this area. Also, we can change the uh, geography as uh, people, two people can get a rest. Uh, this is a specific case, and we redesigned the pain, paving as people can, uh, can, uh, can sit on the edge and the floor. Also, people can get a get a gathering, uh, keeping social distancing. This is a simulation using our our um, algorithm. Uh, this is before before the before of the between value, and this is the after of the between value. There, uh, it means that there is a low low floating population, and there is a, a some kind of uh, floating population. So. Uh, it, this design can uh, attract some people to from the overpopulation area. A uh, three A is the there is a corner. Uh, we we design design the this area using this corner characteristic. So at the wall we design uh, we can we can redesign the facade uh, to install the bench or chair or or we can. We design the sun structure, or we can uh, make some uh, space. Mm -hmm. This is a specific case. Uh, here is the cone loop, and the, here we redesign the bench structure. Uh, people can keep the interaction at here, and also people can keep the social distancing. It's the simulation of. Uh, our design. So at here we can uh, induce the people from the overpopulation area. Last last case is the four way four way. Uh, this is the here here is the, there's two way two side of wall. We can use this we can we can use this characteristic as the design. So we uh, redesign the space to to plant a tree or to People get gathering, or we can uh, design at here center to uh, 
for the people to take away. It is a specific case for uh, in Dongyo 3. So uh, we redesigned the part at the road for people to take away. It is a simulation of, of our design. This is the last slide. Uh, Uh, this issues our concept. Uh, I hope uh, it'll be useful to understand our concept. Thank you for listening. So uh, you're you're done. Yes. All right. So I think this is really interesting um, project. So um, the the one question that I have, um, if you scroll um, back uh, one or two slides. Right here. Uh, so um, I, I, I'm still uh, just trying to understand um, but uh, the diagram at the center. Uh, so you basically um, put a uh, green space uh, at, the, at uh, every uh, corner of the intersection, right? Uh, I think this is just to give um, people uh, a, um, you know, resting space or something like that, right? Um, and, um, you know, uh, was it uh, the result of um, pedestrian uh, behavior at the same time of uh, vehicle traffic? Yeah. That it, it was my, uh, it was, <laughs> it was the question. So the, the reason why I'm asking is that uh, by just looking at this diagram here at the center, so um, when you uh, put uh, a um, artificial island at the, uh, every single corner of the intersection, that uh, it will have a huge implication on uh, a vehicle's traffic, right? Uh, yes. Was it, uh, was, it, was, it, was it your intention or um, you um, just, um, you, you kind of thought that uh, it might be okay? Uh, I think uh, it doesn't matter because we choose the those area based on our data. Uh, all of, all the places are the outlier. It means it means the there is there is a low traffic in this area of uh, that low or less than a right. city value. Right. That, that that was actually what I was asking. Okay. Sorry about that. And um, you know I think this is uh, really interesting. Uh, like I said, uh, but. Uh, I, I think uh, right at this moment, it is uh, a bit dry. So if you can add uh, one more uh, ingredient here, uh, like, you know, the existence of attractions uh, in urban context. So, um, you know, people don't really um, go to somewhere uh, just because uh, the, the street is wider and then uh, there is the, uh, the seeing uh, space uh, uh, alongside uh, of the street. Uh, but uh, they move uh, because they have um, a specific uh, destination uh, they want to visit, right? Yes. So if you uh, add another layer here, like uh, attractions uh, nearby, yes. uh, I think that would make uh, this project more uh, rich. Yeah, I think it's very interesting kind of creative uh, because yeah, um, yeah, when uh, we talk about the pedestrian route choice and pedestrian accessibility and uh, this kind of analysis, the built environments are really important factors, right? So we, when we, when students study about the accessibility analysis, we focus on the urban density, diversity, and uh, root characteristics, right? So I think um, in this team, uh, the what they are trying to do is they try to just to think about the density perspective first, and then they will also, on top of that, if you think about the diversity, which is about the urban program, right? So uh, as a critic, like it's not, if there is a, a kind of just increase the, the density, which could be the structure or like furniture, of course people, you can bring people definitely, I'm sure, because the, then if increase the density, people will go 
uh, will be more than before. But if you can also consider about the, what kind of program you can build in or what kind of program uh, you can bring into the, your uh, design location to increase the pedestrian flows on specific side. And also on top of that, you guys begin, began to think, think about the root characteristics as well, right? Because you redesigned the street layout and uh, street kind of improved the street uh, paving design. So this is also part of the root characteristics. So I think in the end, like for your future development, you also think about like diversity issue. Uh, I think your project will be more realistic and more kind of interesting uh, than now. So, but in general, you did a really lots of work and even like uh, just one for one day, yeah, you, you did a very clear kind of uh, um, an explanation and develop your design scenarios. So I kind of really appreciate your all your effort and time and energy and everything. So uh, we also thinking about the post production and you, I, I can see that you did a like kind of between this analysis with the before case and after kind of interpretation cases, but I can see kind of some kind of, no, you need some kind of improvement, even though you wanna, you just join us like kind of after interpretation and between this analysis, but I think you can make more realistic kind of uh, results uh, for the between this analysis. So I can uh, talk with you further uh, to develop, uh, to do the like model, between this model uh, adjustments. So yeah, if you yeah, really, want to build a more realistic kind of uh, between these analysis results, we can talk uh, after uh, more about that. So, yeah. um, and I have one suggestion. Can you go to the page where you visualize population of that area? Yeah. Uh, maybe one more. I think you visualizing the the generation of population in that area, 20, 30, 40. Yeah. I think the earlier. Yeah, I think it was at, almost at the beginning. The ages, you, you showed us the ages. The population, the population. Yeah, this. Yeah, okay. I mean, this is minor. minor. Here, uh, no, here, this one, I think. Yeah, I think this is minor command, but I think definitely you need to take care of it because uh, it's hard to understand. But I can see like a red color is a you know um, high value compared to the green color, but I can have a sense the relationship between in that scope. So for example, tens, twenties, the image on the left because they have a relative um, sort of difference, right? But I think the most important thing is that uh, to revealing some insight, to reveal some insight, we need to uh, think about so how we you know, compare these value in you know, an absolute sort of um, um, measure system so that we are able to not only see the difference in the 10th or 20th generation, but also we can see um, the difference, how difference you know, between the population studies and 50s that you mentioned in, in your presentation. I think this is just one thing you guys need to you know, be careful in terms of visualizing data to communicate with other people who has no idea about your projects. Okay, this is just one comment. Yeah, so your team really focused on that like, kind of try to make a bridge between design and statistical analysis. You did a lot of effort on that. I, I know about this. So, uh, but like, uh, I, I can see a lot of potential on that, you know, like, uh, because you have a really good uh, eyes and thoughts about the statistical approach while you are doing the urban design. So I can help you out. Uh, you can go further for that. So uh, yeah, but in general, you have a really uh, good start and a very kind of evidence-based, try to go for the evidence-based urban design research and uh, uh, analysis. So I really can see your effort uh, 
one thing which I want to emphasize is that you know everyone talks about data and you know first generate the first um, industrial revolution things, but I think uh, one thing uh, I wanted to mention is that he um, actively used the statistical like approach in terms of take a looking at the urban with data. So I think uh, um, you know overlaying um, another layer which is well defined, you know, dealing with the number. So I think the, the lens with the statistical, um, you know, approach uh, is a really um, give us a fundamental, of, you know, profound foundation to see the urban context with data. So I think this is also very, you know, um, good, you know, strategy for designers. Okay, can, can I add one mention? Yes. yes, please. Okay, I mean, there's a beauty of this project is still within uh, data and statics, you know, numbers, right? But the, the numbers on the statics must be, ha must be meaningful, significant over there. Otherwise, we, we, we can drag all kinds of numbers and data and then we can show it. But, I mean, but, you know, we can do that things, but you have to why that is so meaningful why why that kind of value in you know like uh you know become a ground for the your intervention of what or on your you know site something like that so i'm um, that, that sense is quite interesting you choose like a, a critical point or strategical point on your site and then you suggest some kind of design over there right but that's it I mean, you have to re-evaluate that, that after the you design and then you prove as a your data set again, that that's a beauty of your things, right? But you just analyze and then you just, you know, suggest some idea and then that's it. So I want to see something, you know, you know, different value from your intervention, not just, you know, you know, you, 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 your decision maker, not, not, not at all. I mean, that's not your, your, your strong point. You know what I mean? So for instance, okay, oh, maybe I found that point, I designed something different way of, you know, road system. And then you evaluate again. And so what happened? You have to compare with the different data set. And then now we understand that you, you design is how, how the effect on the actual side over there. You, you know what I mean? So. But he did a kind of before and after analysis a little bit, but it, he didn't, he couldn't complete the kind of regression analysis yet, but the, at least uh, between this analysis before and after shows how those urban contexts, how impact on their own design. Of course, it's uh, still under progress, I think, but at, at least with this diagram, we can kind of can get a sense like how those pedestrian flows and densities are kind of changed by their design interpretation. But as uh, as his critic, like uh, beyond that, we can also, I think it's, but what I can see here is that you have to adjust the weight value on, on the site, and then you have to make more precise adjustment kind of model uh, to do the between this analysis. So, and then after that, you can do the regression analysis, how those are uh, different between the on-site survey and, and this computing results. So I think that could be the kind of your next step. And of course, the, this design uh, didn't really complete yet, I think, right? This is a still your kind of very scratch kind of idea to you guys just try to do kind of some kind of intervention uh, and I very kind of abstract idea on that. So yeah, as a, as a, as, as a critic, like, yeah, we, if you can really more narrow down uh, to see how before and after are different uh, each other and then even for, further on that, like uh, show the, how the regression results really uh, show different uh, different kind of value uh, with the on-site survey will be more valuable and you can you know it's kind of really good way to make decision right like lots of as I lectured like previously we talk about how we can make 
make decision making, you know, while we are doing design, right? Of course, aesthetically, the designers can make decisions, right? This is better than that and that. But by using this kind of evidence-based uh, analysis really help even not only for like urban planners and or like policy makers, you know, like designers also can kind of uh, make a really better uh, decisions for planners, right? So I think um, the beauty of this kind of approach or this design progress is about that, you know, we designers always, we just uh, um, like use a given data or like given rules from the planners. But if you have this knowledge, even though you are designers, you can give kind of new planning rule or planning ideas to the planners or policy makers. So I think you have a really good kind of potential uh, go further uh, the more. So yeah, but it's yeah. a kind of good exercises, right? To do that. Yeah. Thank, thank you, John. My, uh, I, yeah. My understanding of Desmond's question is that like, so we rely on sort of um, data on our system, right? Data on our system is basically how we abstract the urban as a sort of um, node and edge, which represents a place and connectivity. So I think uh, uh, we, I mean, you did very good job um, to understand the, the, what the pedestrian flow and density in the urban context. And then we narrow down, uh, pick a particular place, right? But the, um, I guess uh, there's still some opportunity to um, narrate for what's happening, how we regulate, uh, which happening in one node, for example, or one, one edge between node. So in that context, we can little, you know, you know focusing on like uh, even the, the personal or people's per person scale to how we design the street between two nodes, right? I think that this is the also one valid point to, um, let's say, um, you made some design decision, you make some intervention on that particular street. And then, I mean, the network analysis gives us a um, you know, point to analyze in your design intervention, but also we can think about like how we, you know, your individual design elements, how affects the, the, the sort of uh, flow of the um, people in that particular um, pathway between nodes. I think this is the one, one thing we can uh, rethink or revisit here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, NJ and Jonghyun, for uh, explaining. And also, Deson, thank you for the uh, critical question. I think also this is a good chance for students to also get some feedback from other tutors as well. So uh, please uh, don't be too defensive. We all understand that this uh, workflow is really valuable. Um, and I'm sure uh, students are, are really grateful for the experience. and. Um, but I think it's also good to see what uh, other people from from a bit of distance uh, to uh, to see and see uh, what is the perspective from their point. So I think that's also a valuable discussion. Thank you. And shall we move on?